language course for longer than two weeks, they will get a, a, a five-in-one pass, and 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 we'll absorb the cost of that, the the the, the, the wholesale cost of that to to NMBT or mm -hmm. whomever. Um, I think that it's 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 just a a, a, a button, a a a motivator, if you like, to get people to come and to get people to to spend time and to enjoy those activities. Yeah. Right, the, the other thing yeah, I've got it. Right. The other thing perhaps we could do is to try and get one of the car hire companies on board. Because I'm not so sure about many wild cars. Do we need sort of more than your Toyota Yaris to get there? I mean, if we could get them to get us a, a, a more useful car. Because when you car. do try and book sensible, you know, half, even like a soft road thing, it's like 1200 a day or whatever, which just makes the whole thing so damn expensive. So I don't know whether we could get anybody on board that could do a, a more sensible price on them. Yeah, with the current Nazim and NMA pass, we have, I think, three rental companies involved. So what they've given us is a special rate code um, for discounted rate, which the client, when they book, just need to quote. So um, I don't know for a tour point of view what your thoughts is on that as well. Um, maybe because I know you guys also make commission on those things. But the Bass Bus is something we could maybe include. I don't know how much tickets are there. Maybe a discount on the Bass Bus. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, transport's always a bit of an issue. Uh, sorry, guys. I mean, for you, sorry. The wild coast. Do you? I mean, will an ordinary car do, or do you need? Do you need something a bit bigger, a bit better? Any car will do. Most of our guests, being uh, backpackers, have the cheapest car they can possibly find. Right. They seem to do better than most South Africans. You need a big car for some reason. Okay, you just, haven't heard that this 4x4x4 four by four by four is a higher car. Uh, any old car, any old higher car than 4x4, yeah. We used to take um, higher cars to Bobby Hanscrew because of this. Did you bring any of them back? on the car? Sorry. Any any other questions or comments on the provincial pass? He's so sorry. Just just one question from me to uh, Donay. Sorry, sorry. I just thought about this. Donay, is there any um is there select uh, uh, some sort of select, uh, selection uh, criteria when um when you selecting these experiences? Um, you know, we are selling it to visitors, and of course, we want to maintain some sort of standard um, in terms of the offering, the experience, um, this, this whole drive for graded products, etc, etc. It's just a question. Yeah. Um, it's, just it's, asking. It's, it's, it's a good question and that's where the administrative side of things come in and that's what people need to understand. People need it to actually run and sign up these products. And stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. At NABT, um, the one condition was that they need to be a member of NABT, which was like 600 rand a year. Um, so I would say, as long as they a member of the local tourism association, that's so uh, ECPT, I don't know, or, okay. or just a legally or legal business, um, and yeah. somebody needs to verify that. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so Mindy, so I think from the agency can certainly assist. Um, Susan will certainly assist with uh, with. Um, um, with putting up some sort of criteria for the provincial pass and that can be bounced off to members and, and we can send something from a draft perspective for that but we can chat to Danae offline as well. Thanks. That's actually great. Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, and you know, you never know, you know, once we, <laughs> we know how we're going to be operating and once we have protocols, this, this could be a very good way for us to, to regulate ourselves in the Eastern Cape. Um, you know, if because we know if someone is a member of the association, they're plugged into this product, we co we're constantly or at least more regularly interacting with them and getting feedback, even from guests in terms of, you know, health pr health procedures, cleanliness procedures and all of that. Um, but I, don't, I wouldn't tie ourselves in it now because we actually, we don't know what's coming, but along the way it could help. Thank you, Lavinia. Um, um, maybe and then if Lisa, just on that point, um, that's the one aspect that we needed to take into account as well with as NMBT is liability. Um, 
So what we've done is we've, we've got a pretty good liability cover. Um, we have a form when you sell it where you actually agree to, um, what's, what's the word? Could not to hold MBT liable for anything that happens with the activity and that they would adhere to the terms and conditions of the supplying um, supplying company. There's all legal document that we've done through lawyers and stuff, which will actually apply to the, this pause as well, which will cover um, ECPT and all the stakeholders. And it does not, however, stop the supplier from being sued. Um, so if you're the shark cage diver operator and the shark bites somebody, that's still the issue between the, the client and the person. Yeah, but the product itself is indemnified as the as the middle middle person, yeah, yeah. middle man. As, as the salesperson, the the, the pass operator will be, will be covered. So, so okay. it might it might make the case for one of the criteria for admission to this being appropriate liability insurance for for activities. Absolutely, and I think that's something we need to look into because this is also something that we want to use to try and include, um, you know, the smaller guys, the smaller operators. Um, and uh, as we know, compliance is a huge issue. And I think as, as an association, um, we, I don't know, we need to look into providing the education or the steps as associations as well. Um, because what happens to those small guys? I think the big issue there is compliance. So do, are they excluded? But, you know, what are the risks? I, we're going to have to look at a lot of those little nitty gritties. Okay. Anything else? The past is a hot topic. <laughs> um, so I'll move on to something a little more boring, um, in which is our suppliers list. Boring but useful, or as Hanali says, if it, it might look ugly, but if it works, it's hot. So, <laughs> so um, in the in the Eastern Cape, Colin, you might remember you were in the coffee shop and Susan, um, in the Eastern Cape Runway to Recovery, when we were having our little dop and scope afterwards we discussed a suppliers list as a way to combat the need or, or make the load easier when product needs to get in line with PPE um, requirements. And originally, um, you know, we thought we need, as SATSA, we could assist in some way with procurement, but obviously that's a mammoth task that is logis logistically impossible. So the, the next alternative we, we landed on was actually creating a list on the SATSA website where everybody can um, add or we can add suppliers that will give either sort of a preferential rate to SATSA members or um, suppliers that in some way assist communities as well as conservation. Um, and we, we would list them and list their benefit, whether it's a discount to SATSA members, a, cert, a certain kickback to conservation, a certain kickback to community projects. And this would take members as well. Um, and it's something that, for example, um, when, I, when we mentioned it on Monday in our committee meeting, Sean made the example that he is very um, good chums with a guy, an owner of a, of a hardware store here in PE. And he would be able to approach the, the gentleman and, and get him on board on such a suppliers list and negotiate with that person as to you know, what he would be willing to offer certain members. It doesn't have to be anything that's going to put the guy out of business, but whether it's a 5% discount or a 10% discount, or I spoke to someone and they were willing to do maintenance without consultation fee when they do charge a consultation fee and things like that. And I think as members um, of the association, it would be really helpful in our reasons to start collecting these kind of contacts and suppliers of guys who you use, from your accountant to to your maintenance guy to the person that does your internet, um, and we would be able to structure it on the website in such a way that if you're on the wild coast, you can, whether it's an Excel sheet or something fancier, go and have a look at who's there that you can use um, as a SATSA member and actually 
gain, you know, you know, get a little bit of a discount or work with someone that actually knows the industry very well and knows your needs very well. So that is the um, suppliers list. We don't have a fancy name for it yet, um, but that's something that's coming and we will communicate it to, to the members um, and just encourage everybody to start submitting um, submitting their contacts and, and, and stuff like that. So it goes beyond just suppliers of PPE. I mean, I made the example that we as Mantis use, we have a set supplier list um, and we use suppliers that strictly give back to conservation. Um, number one, if they give back to our own conservation NGO, but you know, number two, if they give back to conservation and communities in some way. And um, due to COVID, a lot of the supplies that we get from those people have changed and they're now supplying PPE equipment. You know, that would be a person that I would put on because you're getting PPE, P PPE equipment at a good rate as a SATSA member probably. And then you know that some of that money is actually going towards a community project that's feeding people. Um, because obviously we know tourism does more than just feed the people that work within tourism. So, yeah, so that is the suppliers list. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions or suggestions? Um, yeah, anything like that? Donne. Um, yeah, I just want to check. So, it'll be on the SATSA website, right? Yes, it will exist on the SATSA website. Will it be possible to have it per region? Because I would prefer to support uh, Eastern Cape businesses, if, if that makes sense. No, of course, it makes perfect sense. And, and, and it makes perfect sense for us to buy from people closest to us. I mean, you know, you think of fuel costs, delivery costs and all of that. So I imagine and I think Han and I, Han and Lee and I chatted about it briefly that we would need to make it per region. And I mean, even in the region, it's, there's a huge difference between getting something from East London if you're sitting in PE, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, we have to really nail it down. So we're still figuring out how to do that. Any other questions or comments about our supplier list? Anywhere you think it could be enhanced? I mean, it's, 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 a, work, it's a working idea at the moment. Sorry, Mindy, so if I can just add in here quickly. It's going to be based on the strength of what members share, though, because obviously, you know, we can, we can share a few of the service providers we know, um, like the ones we've been able to, Desiree Connell, from a labor point of view, uh, you know, Trudy Brockman, who does the CPA stuff, um, but it would be around members sharing what they've got. Absolutely. Just an item on the procurement, uh, where, where this whole thing actually also started was with the industry protocols, the TBCSA thing. Um, uh, obviously, everybody's going to need some kind of mask or sanitation, and it would be nice if we were able to source that at a, at a slightly better price for the industry. Um, it is something that TBCSA has taken up and they will be running with because they've got a, a much larger, it's economy of scale, and they've got a much larger, much larger base to work from. And how would it work logistically? Will they have points in each province? Um, do you know how they're going to go about the, the task team had the first meeting today. Um, it is on the agenda. It wasn't really discussed. I think for now, it's really just to get the protocols out so that we can hopefully get tourism started at level three. Um, lots of work to do. The standard operating procedures is first, that has to be done over the weekend, finished by Monday. Um, and then there's staff training that has to happen, which again, they want to sort of do everything online so that there's no cost for businesses to adhere to these new uh, regulations that's being put in place. Okay. Sounds good, well, that's exciting. So then, Han and Hanali, that means in a couple of weeks or a month, I don't know, we'll be able to go onto the SATSA website and, and procure or order or TBCSA website. How will it be funneled through the associations or just directly from? I think in this case, look, it, it's very much a guessing game because we don't know what it's going to look like and what they're going to be able to do. But um, it will be, it'll probably be through TVCSA. There was talk about bulk buying, so literally TVCSA buys it, but I think the, the devil is in the detail, whether this is going to be something that is um, possible. The, the, just the thought behind it, the thought behind 
doing all of these kinds of conversations is to make it as cheap as possible. The, the um, adherence to the safety pr protocols that's being put out, the training of your staff, the procurement of the things that you have to have in place in order to open your business all has to make, it has to be the cheapest possible thing that we can get away with. Uh, the, the pledge and the badge and the SOP shouldn't cost anything. It's just the product that you need to put in place. Okay. Um, Andy, sorry, do we tell our members and industry colleagues now to not buy stuff now and wait a bit? Because I know a lot of them are keen to stop buying stuff. I think maybe, look, they've got to get ready. So what my prediction was all along is that we will open up so fast that we will not be ready. As, as quickly as we closed down and we weren't ready to understand what regulations and things meant, it was, it's going to be the opposite for opening up. So um, I, I would say give it, give it maybe a week. Just ask them to wait a week because if, we, if things do open up on the 1st of July, June, June, which is what we really are hoping from the announcement later on. Um, you have to be ready. So maybe smaller quantities for now, if they have to. But I also wouldn't, you know, the problem is these are all conversations. You can't hold your breath and hope that they're all going to happen. There's, there's 20 or 30 things happening at the same time. It, it could be that in the conversation, it, it, it comes out that this is actually not a viable option. So I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't. Just wait a little bit and then go ahead. Okay. Uh, understood. Phil, oh, that's very useful. Um, <laughs> oh, no wonder. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, trying to get back to my agenda here, I've lost it. <laughs> um okay any other any other matters or or things that we like we have missed that you'd like to discuss um that came up along the way from anybody at all finally if my dogs don't help me have the conversation with you guys sorry about that um the i just i i don't know how many of you were on the recovery session webinars and i know we are so inundated with information that we don't all necessarily read what's going on but just to, to i just want to paint the big picture of what's happening in the industry at the moment we ran our recovery webinars um, all of the other tbcsa associations did the same at the same time the provincial authorities there was a MINMEC, uh, Susan, I don't know if I'm saying it right, MINMEC, MIPTEC something meeting where the tourism authorities met with Minister of Tourism. Um, all of these things are happening at the same time. So everybody's trying to prepare motivations on why tourism should open up faster. Um, as I said earlier on, it, it, it's taken a while, but I think the message has finally gotten through to people outside of our industry in government necessarily activity but an economic activity um, uh, minister of tourism is fully behind the fact that tourism opens up we just have to have a compelling enough reason um, to to do so the minute we open up and and i'm just sort of giving you all of the background here a little bit demagogue but i'll get to my point eventually if we open up and they see that you know all of a sudden there's a spike in infections in um, Addo, because we've opened up tourism, they will close down. They will, they will literally, they will take the whole industry and close it down as, again. So we are trying to develop the protocols and the the risks adjustment strategy, if you want to call it that, in such a way that it is as least onerous and cheap, uh, affordable for products as possible, but at the same time allows government to give us the little signature on the piece of paper to say that we're going ahead. Um, the reason I mentioned the runway to recovery, so we did it, uh, TBCSA associations did it, government did it, all of that is being collated, it's going to be presented to the minister who is presenting it to the, uh, you know, the powers that be higher up. Um, it is, it's definitely a full industry uh, process. The, what David and them are busy doing, uh, they've got under the TBCSA, a, uh, what do they call it, a marketing and recovery a working group which is made up of inbound um, outbound and domestic and then airlift of course for us in inbound tourism airlift is the most important because that's how we're going to get our international tourists back 
So um, those are the three working groups, and then there's protocols that sits on the site that supports all of those. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's hectic debates. It's, nobody's sort of agreeing, and we are not going to get to the point where we all agree on what is the way to go forward, but we do have to draw a line in the sand. Um, the, some of the stuff that are going into the protocols are requirements that government has set already for instance temperature checking so so as an activity you would have to check every single person's temperature as they come onto your property to do the activity it is stuff that we want to say no that is not going to work in tourism um, but it's going to take maybe a little bit longer to get some of the protocols out of the way again we do not want to get to the point where government regulates or government writes the regulations for what tourism should do. It should be a tourism industry. And then in that sense, I'm including Department of Tourism and Tourism Provincial Authorities that makes these discussions. Um, so yeah, so, so the deadline literally for pretty much to have everything ready and, and, and presented to government is the end of May. Fantastic, thank you, Hanani. Any any questions from anyone? Any comments? Just um, okay, so Ani, so the first thing we're expecting is interprovincial travel only, no? or or will it be cross border? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it'll be inter. I think we'll open up. So so initially there was talk, and look again, grief, good grief. You please do not hold me to anything I say because it changes so <laughs> rapidly. I will look like a fool if I, I'm just sharing with you as the information comes in. So initially they were saying that they will only open up in the province. Now it sounds like it will be interprovincial. Um, and, and the idea is really for us to, to use domestic tourism as the um, example of how uh, to sort of to, to, to showcase that tourism is safe, not only to our government, but also to our international tourists. We've got to get traveler confidence back in again. I, although there are some people that are booking and that wants to travel, if you look at the gen generic market or general market, people are very hesitant. So we will use those domestic uh, people for that. But yeah, sorry, Danae. So I think interprovincial and then regional and then international. That's my prediction, but don't hold me to that. Is that that is actually helps me a lot because we were originally planning our marketing for the local market, just for PE residents. <laughs> um, but, which is a bit of a problem, but... Um, yeah. That's what okay, I'm so saying. This thing, the recovery is going to happen so fast. They're going to open up so fast. We, we're not going to be ready, you know? Okay. Do, do we not do we not need to go through this curve like go through the part first before we can even talk about recovery so i mean we're not going to go through our peak which is going to be july-ish by the sounds of things and then only can we start really thinking about opening uh sean they were so so this is this is a point that people were actually vehemently fighting against saying COVID is going to be with us for the rest of our lives pretty much what we're going to have to understand is that there will be how to manage the um, how to manage ourselves with this disease going forward until and even when there is a vaccine it doesn't necessarily mean that you know like a flu shot uh, I suppose some vaccines are a little bit more um, what do you call it um, effective than others but um, no they are saying let's open up let's learn how to live with what is going to, something that is going to be with us for a long time i think on the international travel side that might be the case so that's definitely not going to open up that soon um yeah the 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 yeah i'm i'm going to leave it there I, I don't know if that really answers you Sorry, yeah, no, I was, didn't realize I wasn't, I was unmuted. Yeah, that sort of answers it. I mean, there's no answers yet. <laughs> no, and, and nobody's going to, there's, we're going to have 50% of the people loving what comes out of the working group and we're going to have 50% hating it. And, you yeah. know, that's just what we're going to have to live with. Okay. my dog. Yeah. Sean from Buccaneers, that's Sean. Um, in the meanwhile, what I'm thinking um, is maybe we can work together in promoting each other's areas a bit. Um, 
because I think your initial market, I don't know how many people from PE actually end up at, in your side. Um, are they younger people? Are they older people? Maybe just if you have some information that you can share, we can maybe get it out to some of our local guys. Yeah, see if we can help you guys get some business. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to do that going forward and, and cross selling. And I mean, even before this provincial pass comes along, um, and, you know, just to get our people locally ready for our brother sister markets within the Eastern Cape. So, all and any content that can be shared. I know Susan's been driving a um, message to collect content for ECPTA and they're making what amazing videos. So I think we all need to get on board and start sharing that content because I, at, at the end of the day, the product that we're going to all be pushing as our single hymn book is going to be under the Explore EC banner in any case and we need to start sharing that content. Um, that's just my, my feeling on it. Yeah, oh, thanks, noted. And I mean, Sean, from your guys' side, and I think David is also still on the line. David, you're still there. Um, and, and Brenda, from the Wild Coast side, are, do, do, do you have any particular um, concerns or needs um, just when listening to all of these things that you feel will work, will not work for the Wild Coast and, and how things might need to be adjusted for, for, for your market and that side because that's something that we, we really are taking very seriously. We want it to be all inclusive, but we don't want to be, we don't want to work blind and you, the guidance and the ideas will come from you guys. Sean? <laughs> Hot potato here, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I'll answer if you want, or you can start. Or Brenda, ladies first. Uh, Brenda? Brenda's on mute. Uh, oh, there no, you, you, you guys can go ahead. Um, I will let you lead this discussion. <laughs> um, well, I'll step on Sean's toes. Um, you know, really, it's just exposure. As long as we're in the mix, that's fine. You know, generally, I think the Wild Coast people come here as long as we, people are visible. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And as uh, Colin said in the very beginning, it's certainly anything that gets people north of PE is good. <laughs> of course, yeah. they tend to head south to the garden roof, which is um, the same trend for the last 20 years. But um, really, I suppose it's just exposure and, um, yeah, it's probably the main thing. There's nothing I mean, really. Well, we've got I our logistics we've got to deal with and that's our problem and we're used to dealing with them and, you know. Fine. Sorry, can I just, just ask a on. question? Do you, do you all guys, I mean, when they, when they come your way, I mean, do they do a route between sort of East London and Durban or do they do Port Elizabeth, Durban? I mean, PE is absolutely a bed and brook butter. But do, do people generally do that trip or how does it normally work? How so, do I mean, there's all different ways, Colin. And I mean, I'll let Sean can probably add more. And I'm sure Brenda is slightly different to uh, Sean and I. Um, but generally, it's all sorts. It really, we get domestic tourism and is often a, around around route either from PE or Cape Town or Durban or Joburg coming down. They'll do a few. Uh, people in the area, you know, the Wild Coast or something, um, something like that. You know, we're obviously fairly um, in there with students and people like that. And then international market people are normally obviously traveling the coastline. They they either usually start in Cape Town or Durban and head their way. People who've been to the country a few times. Uh, do sometimes come straight here and then you've got the sort of volunteers or people who are spending time in the country, expats or doing volunteer language courses. They might come up to the region for a, a week or two weeks or something like that, you know. Um, Sean, I don't know, you, add, you could probably add some more on Brenda. 
Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the challenge that we have on the wild coast is that it's not like the garden route where you're driving through your specific destinations as you're moving between PE and Cape Town. You know, here you have to make uh, you, you, the N2 runs inland, you know, your hi highlights are on part there and a uh, few other little spots along the way. And if you're wanting to get to the coast, you've got to make the detour. So, you know, it's an hour, hour, hour and a half down to Coffee Bay. So you, you're not dipping in, going to see Coffee Bay for a cup of tea and then mm. carrying on your, on your way. You, you're going there for a reason. You go, you, it's planned. You've got to go for a minimum of, you know, one, two nights before you move on. So I think that's the difference from, from the, garden, the garden route experience is that you, you've got to move destination to destination rather than just traveling or meandering through. I think that, that's sort of the, the standout difference. And, and your overseas visitors from which countries? The Germans mostly, or yeah, same as South African domestic, uh, same as South African international okay. market. Probably yeah. Germans, Dutch, yeah. United Kingdom, North America. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and booking through what? Through Bookings.com, or do they do it through tour operators, or as it normally were? We hope not, but uh, yeah. <laughs> directly if possible, but. Uh, through yeah. our websites obviously booking.com is a big channel all the OTAs are a big channel it's main, very seldom through agents uh, more domestic people through agents than um, really yeah. so how do they figure uh, it out and they get a map and they just go oh, we go there 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 and there and yeah the well it's one. I mean yeah it's like I don't know how you go on holiday when you go or if I go to Indonesia or I visit my in-laws in Australia I just bloody go you know I don't book anything in advance I arrive uh, maybe book one night if uh, it's busy or something like that and I need to or if I'm we... landing at an in, you know, obscure time. Yeah, people are very free. I mean, that's, I suppose, the upside of our industry. That, that's a downside of the OTAs because if you're booking long term ahead, uh, it's a very big problem I've found in the last few years is People have booked the whole trip on a bloody booking.com and it becomes much harder then to change. Whereas five, ten years ago, people would come here for a night and end up staying a week or so. Mm. Now it's much harder to change your uh, plans kind of story, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think from our point of view, the what's been one of the bigger changes in the last couple of years is has been the tour operator who's you know set up a specific itinerary or activity-based itinerary, um, and then included us in that. You know, I mean, I think that's mm. where we're sort of crossing into the more um, orthodox way of tourism versus the FIT that we've, we used to have as our, as our anchor. Because we, I mean, I mean does that actually mix work for you guys? You know, has, has, show, has shown benefits? Having a bit of tour operator business, a bit of direct. Yeah, you, you know, know we got we smokers here on the wild coast. You got to grab what comes past. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't say that it was a direct strategy. I think you know, if you, is one thing bubbles up, you grab it. Um, I think you know what has ha happened is tour operators have had look look South Africa and realized that hey, at some point they've got to get into the wild coast. And then, uh, you know, they've started to look around and include it in their itineraries and rethink, rethink their product. So, you know, I think it, was, it is a natural uh, evolution and step forward. Mgazi, Mgazi itself doesn't get a lot of big tour groups. Our, our, our groups are a lot smaller, more intimate, and we are getting a lot more of the individual overseas traveler. But um, our main market is our domestic market. And most of them coming from KZN inside as well. Nice to know. Um, Susan and Lavinia, I just want to find out, do we have, I would imagine, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm just checking, do we have these stats for, for Wild Coast? I mean, for me, a big question mark has always been if we, we know the numbers that are coming through um, through from the garden route, we drop, because it's a, it's a very tour operator driven business, we know the numbers that come in P Airport, but we don't necessarily know the numbers that are coming in from KZN and other access points into, into the Eastern Cape, which land up in the wild coast and land up in other places like Rafa Do we have these stats and, you know, 
because they could be very useful if we could share them, no matter where they're coming from or where they lie. Yeah, thanks, Mandy. Um, so I think I think um, that is certainly an area as a province, as a, as the province as a whole, where we are really lacking is providing a research data that can inform effective and informative marketing decisions. Because as an agency, I certainly have experiences where we are making marketing decisions, and it's based really on very little. Um, factual and and, um, and 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 to a large extent research that really filters down into cities areas um, etc etc we initially I mean the only research we're currently using is that of SA tourism and to some extent um, uh, um, South Africa stats but uh, that too then, as you're aware there's a lag in that um, we as an agency haven't as yet appointed our research manager and we're hoping that with that appointment we can close some of the gaps where this manager or this person will be there to um, engage with the various stakeholders, put surveys out and then obviously present that into some sort of business that makes some sort of sense, uh, research sense and can provide our stakeholders um, um, a lot of information that will be useful to where they need to market, um, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, research is, is quite, um, is certainly a topic for discussion and, and we've had that at various lengths uh, internally as an agency um, about this. And, um, but still, unfortunately to date, we haven't been able to close that gap on the research side. Um, we are also looking into uh, collaborating or partnering with, with as, as, as the agency from a province perspective, partnering with research companies to assist mm -hmm. us um, to, to, um, to provide that information, not only to us, but also to support the stakeholders within the, within the province. But of course, with COVID-19 on our doorstep, um, obviously there's certain things that had to be prioritised um, and um, I'm not sure going forward what will those priorities be from new appointments or partnerships, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we will certainly keep um, keep our stakeholders informed. Whatever information that comes comes to our table. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Lavinia. And Mandy, on the research thing, um, maybe if I I don't know how correct our stats is, but um, according to our research about only 20% of all international visitors coming to PE actually end up going further into the Eastern Cape. Um, I've, um, I've always blamed the DMCs for that because they only sell luxury travel because <laughs> there's more money to be made. Um, so I'm not sure how many big five-star lodges and things are f once you drive past the Makala and those guys out there. So I'm not sure how many people are actually selling the rest of the Eastern Cape. So maybe that is a strategy or thing we need to look at is how do we get more operators to start selling the rest of these um eastern cape um yeah maybe colin you can be a key driver on that well i mean it's, it, you know i think what uh, starts off in urban you drive the wild guys which is fantastic you do you do ado you do um founders and um come to the airport in pe to leave <laughs> <laughs> Leave by Port Elizabeth, like it says in the brochures. Maybe an idea would be maybe we can develop our um, provincial reserves. I don't know how much money you have, Lavinia, um, Susan. Maybe, maybe, maybe get some investors to build its concession lodges there or something. I don't know. Check it up. I don't know. <laughs> we need to do something this week, don't I? Like, not, not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we're going to have to get quite creative on that. And I think we're going to have to rely a lot on association members to start filtering in that information. Like Sean and David, just the information that you've given me now, I mean, it already says that we need to take a slightly different approach, you know, in how we include the Wild Coast, how we, how we deliver and distribute that content, how we package it. Um, so, yeah, you guys are going to have to guide us a lot and, and maybe try and get this kind of information to us in, in, 
in a in a document of some form so we have it so Lavinia and Susan have it and we can work off of it um, because you know when we go into marketing the provincial pass we need to get that time in the spotlight but it's useless if we don't do it right and we just paint everything with one paintbrush um, but again you know we're going to rely on you to to guide us in terms of your markets you know your lead-in times your platforms and all of those kind of things um, Manisa, maybe, is, is it not a good idea that we maybe start a provincial research task team somehow? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. TPTA to obviously run then or something, I don't know. Um, because I know there's a national research council um, or committee that I know you're in. So maybe something on a provincial level would also be good. Because I don't trust SA tourism stats, don't say anything only. Um, it's not accurate. It's definitely. Oh, so I, I do have to say something. I got a very interesting quote on stats today. So stats is like a bikini. What they show is interesting, but what they hide is even more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always been interested in, in just the arrivals and departures from Addo. And if we had a way of, you know, just doing visitor surveys at in Addo, we would quite quickly get to understand a lot about our, our market going north, south, east, west, doesn't really matter. You know, it does seem to be the highlight stop within the Eastern Cape. So we've got a high concentration of internationals and quite a mixed, mixed band of people. You know, and if we had a five, ten, ten question questionnaire that people asked, you know, maybe we use students, tourism students, at that restaurant, you know, we could quite quite quickly get you know interesting data. Um, just to to to, is, I mean, from a from a wild coast point of view, we would start to understand whether that twenty percent is a true and accurate reflection. Um, and then we know we know we know that we've got a lot more people we can entice. <laughs> the, actually, you'd want to try to get um actually just if you guys know sand parks well do it at the bloody gate everybody that goes in there does five questions heading where next you know you really don't nationality you almost got it if it's just a way of capturing it and then obviously formatting it into some database you're done it's, i mean it's not a lot really you're just trying to find the find the directions because there's a lot that go from us down to Ada and there's certainly a lot who come there as Sean mentioned and it's a, it seems like it was a very valid one as a starting point that probably is relatively easy. Yeah, M Mendisa, I also must agree with, with Sean and David. I think that's a good approach in the sense that I do believe there's a lot of reliable research information out there sitting with the individual product owners or stakeholders. It's just the collection of that information and the consolidation of that information and then putting that into a format um, that can be used um, by, by the province as such. So um, I think I think I, I agree if we if we are able to um, get a group together that will um, survey some of the iconic or the more frequented products around of the province will get a picture of, of our source markets, how visitors are moving, how they're accessing the province, etc. etc. And I think accessing uh, sand parks' data um, and other key information, the bungee jump, for example, as well, um, it would be a, a good, um, a good uh, stakeholder to, to get on board as well. Um, but yeah, but, but there's all sorts of things we can do as, as this group. But I think the information is out there. Hence, I was saying from an agency perspective, if we had our research manager in place, he could be then be able to facilitate this and take the role of championing uh, this process. But unfortunately, we haven't appointed as yet. Thanks. I think, uh, Lavinia, that's a very good point. And we need to discuss it, I think, in, in as, we, as we develop our, our MOU or MOA, um, because it will be a need, you know, that when we move forward with the pass um, as a product that affects the entire province and needs the entire province behind it. Um, so, yeah, we can discuss it then. And hopefully you'll have some 
or, or, or we'll all have some sort of solutions. Um, anything else? I've got to anything say, else? I quite like Donay's idea of uh, just putting, starting and something on Sean's kind of thing, you know, I mean, uh, so we're all pretty busy at the moment solving our own problems, but if we could somehow just start uh, putting the word out to Sandparks, <laughs> share your stats at the gate, the main gate, you know, um, we need these questions, what questions do you ask, which ones do we want, but anyway, yeah. Um, Donna, don't you get those stats already from Addo? I'll have to check. Irina normally does all the, most of the research. Um, we do have access to Room Seeker. I don't know if I've never really gone to see if I can actually get all those stats. Um, no hacking, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm sure they'll give it to us. I mean, I mean they're a key stakeholder in the province, and I think maybe it'll carry more clout if ECPT gets involved. Although we end up in the SARS and reservation office, but. Maybe as a collective, we can put in a request to do some research. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, donate AXA. Um, AXA is another, AXA is another um, a good source for information as well. I've seen some of the, the data as well. And yeah. yeah, we, yeah we get, that's why I'm not a research expert. Maybe um, if you want to talk research, I must get Irene involved in getting there. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got another question. This is going to take us to a new area. So. But one more second before you go to a new area, Sean. Uh, what about just getting Hugh Bartlett involved? I mean, surely he has lots of students and uh, he's right there and used to be. Are you using a, a, a sabbatical for a year, but we do work closely with uh, Minimum U. Um, I know they. Oh, he's got more time now then. <laughs> yeah, he's got more time, but um, Shirley, um, what's his name? Not Shirley. Is it Shirley, Sean? Sure. It is Shirley, no. <laughs> I've got the name right now. Um, it is Shirley. I call her professor because I'm not allowed to call her by her name as a student. I'm still a student. Um, they are, um, we have a close relationship and they're part of the tourism action group that Sean's heading for the business chamber. So. Um, I think there is already an academic link with research there. Um, she, I think she, it's maybe, maybe she's very willing to to do work and stuff like that for us. So, so we you know we can talk to her and 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 and, and I'm sure that she'd be willing to share whatever she's got and look at new initiatives. Dave. I think if if we come up with the research problem or what we want to achieve with the research, then it'll be easier to identify what what we need to ask and what we need to ask. Um, yeah. So if there's anything you need to know, maybe pop us an email to say this is the type of things that you want to know, and then we can. Am I putting the horses in front of the car, Clemina? <laughs> I think a nice starting point would also be, you know, for for um, our colleagues on the Wild Coast, you know, Sean, David, everybody, to share their own stats as well, because that could give us a good indication. Sure. Um, you know, at least in terms of patterns and, and source markets and those things, this is the low hanging fruit. We're not going to have a direct idea, you know, a clear approach. Hmm. Maybe, what we can do, maybe what we can do is share our research report with you, see what else, what, if that's the type of information that you'd like. Yeah. Uh, maybe make suggestions of what you'd like to add and then. We have some sort of a framework to work on and work, work together. That would be great, like a template, yeah. Maybe we should, Donna, as you've said, maybe we should um, ask Irene to, to, to manage that because he is the researcher. And, and yeah. Um, are you guys keen on a research stuff. meeting with him sometime? Sean? <laughs> Just to chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. if necessary. Yeah, if necessary, yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, the the thing that's going through my head at the moment is that it's great to do all this research, but actually, you know, what is the information going to help us? Because we're going into this completely <laughs> new space that no, yeah, no. <laughs> just madness, you know. But no. I mean, 
One's got to hope we're going back to something similar. I don't think. No, I mean, but I mean, what, I think one thing that's been said a lot is that um, to look, and it was said in the in the runways last week, to look to our original clients and consumers, and uh, you know, with the hope that they will be the first ones because they're familiar to to travel again to come. And I mean, this is. Um, speaking to the, you know, the international clients in that space. Um, so we hope, we don't know, sure, we don't know, but it's, it's yeah. just working with what we, what we have and praying over it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, Sean, it, 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 it also, and, and Dave, it, 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 for me, it, 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 had, it had a positive result. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really am facing the closure of my business. There, there's, there's no two ways about it. But the fact that we can all sit and cooperate, that we've actually got people listening to, to our end of the industry, if you like, um, and taking on board what we say and, and trying to create a strategy that is going to drive people all over this province to all kinds of accommodation, whether it's what Mandisa offers or it's what you offer. To me, this is, this is at least one one positive that might might not have a huge impact on me, but, but it yeah. certainly. <laughs> um, yeah. and, that, and and you know, uh, we're we're surviving our business on, on 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 trying to go online, and and we're getting people biting. And guess who's biting? Guess who's booking yeah. a one-on-one -on -one Skype course or, or or a small group course? People who've been to BLI before. Yeah. Yeah. And they say to us, we want to help, and this is the best way we can help. Yeah. So, the, and those other guys are going to come back first, I think. Yeah, I'm I mean, right. we launched the voucher thing this week, and I mean, obviously it's to our database, but yeah, they're, they're those customers that got to know you. That, yeah. That, that have bought. I've got a question uh, for Sydney. Only, um, do you know if is it Tourism is doing any market research currently? <laughs> I don't know, but I can check. Um, I can check with them. Okay. They have not. I know that they haven't really. I mean, they've they've sort of shared that initial risk adjustment strategy where they were talking about international visitors in February next year, which caused havoc in the market because you know people had had a postponement for twelve months from from their uh, bookings and um, yeah, it was just it was havoc. So. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I'll check for you. So can I, I had another question if we can change the topic. Mandisa, uh, you want to? Oh, yeah, I'm on mute. Go ahead. <laughs> um, has anyone got some insight on the, on TERFs and whether our, our sector might get, or, or, or is it some motivation perhaps started that we get an extra couple of months? Um, oh. You know, I know initially it was supposedly three months, and I mean, we we only really realistically going to be into a reasonable operations when we get back to level one. So, you know, if we get one, two, three more months, it really does make a big deal. Yeah, so, uh, so Sean, that, that's part of the <sighs> lobbying that um, TVCSA, everybody actually has done with UIF. What is worrying though is it is dependent on how much money left. So it's extended to December for those businesses in tourism who's not able to open up, i.e., your, you know, the ones that are so, that are dependent on international tourists. Um, there were 30 billion rand available in the UIF scheme for tours. Uh, up to for April, 11 billion had been dispersed, and that is those people who still like Colin who hadn't gotten his money yet. Um, so everybody's supposed to get it for three months, and then we want it for a little bit more. So I wouldn't definitely, they're definitely lobbying, they would have to approach Treasury to expand the budget, but I wouldn't hold my breath. We can normally get that other UIF, I think. Huh? We can then, once TERS is finished, we yeah. can, uh, employees can apply for the usual UIF, which would yeah. probably be, with, yeah. 
Yeah, so that's your retrenched right? employees, and that would then be, and they would not have any, they, even if they had gotten the TERS, it would not be held against them. They'd still be yes, absolutely yes. liable for their, and then but there it, was, there was the um, short time. So in April, yes. to, uh, August 2018, they implemented uh, the UIF short time. Yeah, yeah. Whether they will, whether they will then allow you to actually apply for that, we would still yeah. have to see. But it is there. It's regulated. It's gazetted. It should yeah. form part of the benefit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the short time is the next option for for us to consider um, before you get to the in you know hopefully the the not inevitable retrenchment side of things. But um, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's very what difficult. Mandisa, there's two of you. Look there. Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have a I have a hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if there's anything, if there isn't anything else, um, we can close the formal part of the meeting and if Everybody still wants to hang out and chat and have a coffee or a wine for those that can. We'll have stashes. Um, you're more than welcome to. Um, <laughs> I did put on the agenda that um, we would be um, we would be announcing a next uh, chapter meeting and the next date. I don't. We don't have that yet. Hey, honey, we haven't we haven't really spoken. Or no. Decided. I don't yeah, look, it will definitely be a virtual meeting as well again, um, but and it will be the chapter AGM. So we would have to do sort of online voting and nominations and all of those sort of things. Um, we haven't decided. Obviously, there's going to be no SATSA conference this year. Surprise, surprise. Um, we will we will do something virtual, uh, a SATSA national virtual AGM, probably sometime in August, which means that our chapter AGM is the next chapter meeting, uh, official or AGM, I suppose, meeting will have to be sometime at the end of July. But obviously, you guys are welcome to meet as often as you want to, to get things going and, you know, wrap rolling. Just, sorry, can I, can I just ask, what, what's the next step on the, on the, um, on the passport, the, the provincial passport? Because I'd love to get that going ASAP. Absolutely. So on the pass, um, Mr. Fikeri will advise us probably on the, on the com. Um, group when the NMBT board will meet because that's the first buy-in that we need. Um, and then from there uh, on, once we have that buy-in, Rodone, am I correct to say that we can start rolling on the website and that's when Colin's guys can come in while yeah. we... Yeah. Yeah, so, so we will work on... NMBT, then ECPTA. Just to then see. ECPTA, yes. Can I ask you to as well about the website, just to get some sort of a budget together on, on implementation. It won't be much, it won't be much. Hopefully. Okay. Fantastic. Mandisa, I, I will, I will, um, I'll talk to the board tonight and tomorrow morning um, and have an answer by lunchtime tomorrow. Oh, wow. That's very super. That's Thank sweet. you. That is very nice. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Pleasure. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then we'll feed back on a timeline after that, after that we speak to ECPTA, um, and then once we put our heads together with ECPTA, we can give you a, a proper timeline, Colin. Perfect, okay. Well, my guys are sitting there doing nothing, so um, they'd like to get, get, them, get some guys up to um, up the wild cards, get some up to Craddock, because I was talking to a lady from, I can't even say it, did you do, to whatever it is, whose house? Um, and she it just so, uh, and, and I haven't been to, to, to Mountain Zebra Park for 23 years, so, and we just don't sell it. So, I mean, that whole circuit, I mean, you could do a circuit with um, Tutti Karma, Craddock, um, Grafrinet, back down to Addo, would be one sort of two-week trip. And then we've got to figure out how we do the, the Wild Coast. I don't know whether you do East London, whether you could do like with, with Carica, perhaps, and mm. then... Up to you guys. Stop ending in Durban, flying out to East London. I'm not sure, but I mean, it's got to be. It has to be done. It's got to be possible. Done. Absolutely, and I think it's those type of packages that should, we should really form our, you know, our fan trips on, whether they're virtual and content based, whatever. 
give people something new. So, you know, whatever research you do and, and whatever you think works, please pass it on. And I think, um, so if we can work together, we'll put the website together. Um, you guys do the accommodation. Um, you guys got some money for the marketing or whatever. And I think it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. You know, you can put it on the, if you we do our bit here in PE, Donna, and we can, we can do this, include some of the stuff that we've already got. Um, for the one rat for the one circuit, we do another circuit up to you guys and keep them away from the east from the western Cape. Mm. Now, people have been to Cape Town, they've seen the mountain, it was lovely. But let's let's do something real, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. excited, got to do Good. something other than worry yeah. about refunds. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's very exciting. It's very nice to have something to work on <laughs> that we can grasp at. I feel like we've been grasping at straws for the longest time. So I'm very, very excited. Um, yeah, and I would say, uh, I would think we can end the meeting there. Um, we're officially closing at a time. If there's anything, Hanali, anything else before, before I do that? Nothing else. That's nothing from my side, thank you. Sean, anything from your side? All good? I just, yeah, I need to have a talk to you and Hanley afterwards if, if, if it's possible. Okay, can we help them to a WhatsApp call? A WhatsApp call? Yep. After that. Okay, we'll do that. Well, thank you very much for your time, everyone. This has been very productive. Yep. Very, very, like, it's, it's amazing. Thank you so much for making the time and all of your valuable input. Um, I think we have a very exciting road ahead of us. Sorry, I've got two heads now. Um, a very exciting road ahead of us. Um, and I look forward to, to, to working together and making this a reality in as short space of, of time as possible. Um, thank you so much for, for, for your time. The meeting is adjourned. Thank well, you very much. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Brenda. Bye. 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 Thank you. Cheers.